As we head towards November's election, questions over election integrity remain at the forefront. Now, almost all have been disproven as false conspiracies, but how do we get to a point in American history where conspiracies so easily pass for fact? This comes as the Anti-Defamation League released a report showing nearly 1,000 Coloradans signed up to join the Oath Keepers. The ADL defines the Oath Keepers as a right-wing extremist organization based on conspiracy theories. Number 7 is Colette Bordelon live in the studio with us tonight. Colette, you heard from a former Oath Keeper about the dangers of these theories. And guys, I also talked with a professor of psychology at DU who says research suggests we're all more vulnerable to conspiracies in times of crisis, fear, or uncertainty. Now, those are all words that have been used at some point or another to describe the pandemic. And this isn't unique to any political party. Everyone finds a sense of belonging in their group, and that makes it easier to see people outside of that group as the other. But understanding is the first step to mending that disconnect. It's exciting, I know. The little moments in life. When you get my super fashionable Crocs in there. Have ways we can all connect. Crazy mountain towns, they tend to embrace their, their eccentric crazies. But sometimes when doing the most routine things, there's no avoiding a reputation. Now people are, are getting to know me all over again as that, that used to be that Oath Keepers guy. The Oath Keepers are defined by the Anti-Defamation League as a collection of right-wing anti-government extremists. Welcome back to the Colorado Switchblade. I'm your host, as always, Jason Van Tatenhove, coming to you from Estes Park, Colorado. And Jason Van Tatenhove used to work as the group's national media director, leaving around five years ago. And to be fair, at the time I was listening to a lot of conspiracy theory based newscast. Now, Van Tatenhove is reflecting on why and how it all happened. I've had a pretty good addiction to conspiracy theory, and conspiracy theory really is the lifeblood of a lot of these movements. Throughout his life, he says he's always had a healthy level of cynicism. So much of conspiracy theory is it starts off with a grain of truth. Often, an agenda behind that, people become blinded to it. I, I know I became blinded to it. He believes conspiracies turn dangerous when there's a potential for violence. Most people don't know what's true. They don't know, you know, maybe the election was stolen. It absolutely was not stolen. Saying the name of the game is weaponizing conspiracy theories. Fear is the, the gasoline that makes us all go. And that mental health is a key issue in who extremist groups target. That type of messaging really strikes home for people that maybe life isn't going so well and let's face it for a lot of people in this country right now life isn't going so well he says there is a way to bridge the divide now writing a book about his experiences i write about 2,000 words a day pretty consistently knowing the power words have and hoping to help others understand what's at play behind such beliefs we're just not talking to family members anymore over the the dinner table and we need to get back to that and it starts with listening and listening to what they're actually saying a way he thinks we can come together over the little things we can all agree on if it can make the world my daughters are going to inherit just a little bit better then it's worth it Obviously, guys, those conversations Van Tatenhove was talking about, they aren't easy to have. At some points, they can be very difficult, especially with a loved one. But the psychology professor from DU tells me it's important to remember we all have bias. And being able to self-reflect and pull ourselves out of that bias, that's what makes us a genuine listener. And that's what's so important, especially on holidays like Thanksgiving. Well, we I, just I want to see so appreciate yeah. his insight into this. And mm -hmm. uh, nice work. That was, that was very helpful. Thank you, Claire. So exactly what is extremism? I read through an email we received received following last night's coverage of the ADL's report. Now on the Anti-Defamation League's website, extremism is defined as a concept used to describe religious, social, or political belief systems that exist substantially outside of belief systems more broadly accepted in society. And as Colette mentioned there, extremism runs a gamut of the political spectrum. And the ADL cites the abolitionist movement as one that actually proved to be a good thing. Extremism becomes a huge issue when it turns into violence. We looked into the data for you. The number of threats made against members of Congress have increased over the past few years. In 2017, there were around 3,900 threats against members of Congress. Last year, that number rose to 9,600. We want your opinion on this story. Where do you stand on the debate? You can submit your opinion when you visit denver7.com slash your opinion.